Once, there were brass bands, drama and debating societies, and several choirs in Bethesda. Now, there's only the Penryn Male Voice Choir, still one of the finest in Wales, but only three of its members are quarrymen. Three thousand men once worked the Penryn quarry. By the 1960s, this had fallen to fewer than a thousand. In 1964, the Penryn was sold to the English construction company Sir Alfred McAlpine and Son. And in 1969, the huge De Norwick quarry at Llanberis went into liquidation. McAlpines bought that too. The quarry fixtures and fittings were auctioned off. Lot 613, I have an opening bid of 250 pounds. 250, 300, and 50, 400, and 50, 500, and 50, 600 pounds. At 600 pounds for the Dolbadden, at 600, and 50, 750, 750, 850 in front, 950, 1,000 guineas. 1,000 guineas on the front row. 1,000 guineas there. Is there 1,100 about? Can I say 1,100? At 1,000 guineas then. Going once, twice, the last time at 1,050. Penryn quarries had long suffered from a lack of capital investment, and the traditional labour-intensive methods were hopelessly out of date. McAlpines brought in new management and new quarrying techniques. Director Richard Boyle. Blasting techniques are the, main, the principal change. We've uh, installed much larger drills. We still use the gunpowder that's always been used in slate quarrying, probably one of the last industries to use gunpowder. Uh, whereas they used to drill perhaps one-inch diameter holes, uh, removing individual blocks from the face. We now drill horizontal holes at the base of the face and bring the full 60-foot high gallery down in one operation.
men were lifting slate onto rail trucks by hand. Uh, we are now doing it by machines. Our slates have always been in demand, and I think it's fairly safe to assume that the demand will continue. There's the two sides, there's the repair market, which has always been a steady market. In addition to that, the roofing slate has still got the reputation for being the premier roofing material. We are the largest remaining producer, and we are now beginning to exploit export markets, basically all over the Commonwealth, and in North America and Europe, that have been to a large extent neglected. It's easier for the men. The McAlpin has done a great deal to take the strain and the heavy work off the men. But I think the slate craft suffers a lot. That uh, they are ignoring the true quarrymanship. In those days, every quarryman took pride in his work. We handled the slates as we were handling crockery. Because it meant money for us, and wages. McAlpine was doing a huge profit, but I think as the quarry as a quarry will finish far sooner because they are taking huge area of slates off and I don't think it will last. This mass production, isn't it? Mass production now. So many generations are there living on the slate. And I'm supposed they are producing more slates now with a handful of quarrymen than the Pendrin did with three times uh, the number of quarrymen. We rely on the local expertise to extract the material. The men that are working here have learned the new, tech, the new skills of operating heavy machinery, but the underlying skill is there. It's understanding the cleavage, the jointing, the texture of the slate, the colours of the slate. That's one thing that it, it takes a long time to learn, and we've found that it's impossible to avoid. <laughs> 